I'm Phil Schneider. I spent 17 years in black budget programs, um, government geologist as engineer, structural engineer with aerospace applications, self-taught metallurgist. In working with the black projects, I was involved in something very controversial, almost totally unbelievable to most of you. I was involved in building another base inside of Del New Mexico, which is Los Alamos Laboratory. On the southwest part of the Archuleta Mesa, we were in the process of the early stages of building. We drilled four large uh, tunnel-like holes. Some of them ran two and a half miles under the surface. Anyway, after we drilled all four holes, it took about a, two days to drill all four of them. And when you build an underground base, you drill four basic holes, and then you build you know, called stopes or cross-member holes across, and then you bla use blasting equipment, and you literally blast out or tunnel out or deflagrate or melt rock out. The equipment kept coming up broken. So we wanted to go down. We wanted to send somebody down there, a human observer, or human observers in this case, to find out what was going on. When I saw Green Beret and Black Beret people encamped inside of our geologist camp, I knew something was up. The gig was up. In this process, I was lowered down the basket of one of these holes, and about from me to this elderly woman here in the front was sitting a seven-foot-tall alien gray. The stench was worse than the worst garbage can you can imagine. I didn't waste any time. I reached for my pistol. At that time, as an engineer, I didn't have time to carry all the fold or all of one of these big submachine guns that all the sea spray and the yellow fruit and the outer perimeter and inner perimeter security people carried. I carried a little Walter PPK pistol with a nine-shot clip. Plus, you're in a almost like a spacesuit environment, and you're reaching for a gun. It's it's not the easiest thing to do, and then to pop a clip in it and start shooting. And. I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal, and they do die. However, in the process, one of them did this. I rem all I remember is that he just kind of waved his hand in front of his chest, and the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish. It was some form of electrical force because the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me, and there was a, a green beret that was right behind me, but he risked his life. He shoved me back in the basket and hit the button and took me up. And I wouldn't be alive talking to you today if it wasn't for him. I'm forever indebted. He lost his life. 66 Secret Service agents, Green Berets, Black Berets, crack troops lost their lives because the government, our United States government, lied did not tell us anything about the alien threat. There's a war underneath there, and I'm d talking dead serious. The military's known about the alien question for the better part of 70 years. But right now, there are 131 active deep underground military bases in the United States. There's 1,477 of them worldwide. It'd take a year to two years to build each one, and now they're capable of building a couple of them a year uh, with sophisticated methods. My colleague uh, Al Bielik has actually been on some of the high-speed railways, uh, the Magneto-Leviton trains that connect all the deep underground military bases within the United States. He's been on a Mach 2 train and floats off of floats off of a single rail at a, a three quarters of an inch off the rail and we have nothing like this on the surface. Grim Lake is where the infamous Area 51 S4, S2, uh, it was later become the most secret base in the United States. We built out nine underground military bases there, each with an average uh, capacity capable of basically a city underground, roughly four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground. Now, boring machines, for instance, they don't bore. They literally vitrify and melt the rock, deflagrate the rock. It's a very sophisticated laser melting and deflagrating system. It reduces the rock to a powder and then melts the, the remaining rock as a coating on the inside of the base so you don't have to use gunite cements and other kinds of things like that. That's all, the, all old hat now. 
Phil Schneider gave most of his lectures in 1995. He gained a following speaking around the United States, telling people about his alleged experiences. Phil claimed that he personally knew people who also worked in black budget programs who were murdered, and that most of them were made to look like a suicide. There's a good chance that when I fly back to Reno, excuse me, to Vegas, I have to drive home. I left my car down in Vegas. I have to drive home alone. I'm scared to hell. On January 17th, 1996, after not being seen for at least five days, Phil Schneider was found dead in his apartment by his landlord and a detective from the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. The autopsy report listed the cause of death as unknown, but it was later discovered that Phil was actually strangled by his own catheter hose. Was this a case of negligence or a cover-up? I, there's a number of you ladies present, so I won't gore you out, but uh, Al has seen uh, some of the wounds and there's a few other people that have been to a few of my other lectures and they can attest that I have been shot. Uh, I've been uh, run off the road, I've been uh, pushed off the road. Probably the reason I got shot to pieces and 11 attempts on my life is I am a direct threat to the entire system. The New World Order, the alien agenda is one and the same. It's world takeover and the decimation of the population of this planet. There are nine races of alien populations. To look at a human being as a bag of food. They're not cannibals. They don't eat the flesh and the bones and all that kind of stuff. They use the glandular secretions of animals and human beings as a mixture of the vitamins for their food. They get high off of our adrenal gland substances called adrenal chrome. It's something like uh, cocaine to them. And you'll keep seeing more and more people disappear. Right now, there's 100,000 children totally unaccountable through FBI archives, cannot be traced anywhere. They haven't been murdered. Nobody's ever seen them. I think they're hauled underneath in some of these bases, and they are summarily done away with, and they are literally eaten. Now, that is a scary thing indeed. Deep underground military bases. Extraterrestrials living beneath Earth's surface. A race that might not even be from another planet, but rather one that has existed here, in the shadows, throughout mankind's entire development. Is this the biggest cover-up in our history? Or just another conspiracy theory? We still have no definitive proof that any of these claims are true. Which is all the more reason why this just might be one of the greatest journalistic responsibilities of our time. And I'm not asking you to believe me in total. I am asking you to seriously do enough homework that you can go out in through the public record, through the congressional records, find out who's voting for what, and go from there. Do your own program. Do your own agenda and do your own speaking out, and if enough of us do this, there is some saving grace.